Hey Rex. Hey everybody, this is Tyson with Fuel Systems Research and Development. Wanted to share a video with you of my gen set that is equipped with my fuel vapor system that I designed specifically for this unit. Um, this right here is my watchdog. Since I've had problems with people breaking in and messing things up and trying to steal crap from me. Um, I have him, he's a gigantic dog. Um, purebred German Shepherd, all black, not a look of any other color on him. But anyway, back to this. Um, I'm going to go through this and let you guys know exactly how this works. I'm not going to do a, a test in this video, I'm not going to show it running, because I need to do a couple of little tweaks on it before I do that. Um, but here it goes. It is empty. There's no fuel in my holding tank. I'll start. I'll pull on this just to show you that there's nothing in there. It's not going to start right now. So, <clears throat> okay, this right here, this is my fuel reservoir. I removed the fuel tank that came with this generator and replaced it with this this little reservoir tank um, so that I can um, mark specific um, with increments on here the different amounts of fuel that I'll be using. Um, I'll put it in ounces and then I can pour fuel in until it, it, it goes up to the line. Then I'll know that it's let's say 12 ounces that's going in there and I can run the generator like normal um, and I can run it off the vapor system. So the fuel will go from this reservoir tank down here through this barb fitting at the bottom of it come down through this tube and pass through this whole valve system right here and into this fuel level regulator chamber um, this valve setup right here how this works is this particular valve right here is a shut off that shuts the fuel off going to my generator. This connects into my carburetor um, right down here at the back. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not from that angle. But anyway, it goes back there and connects into my carburetor and delivers fuel to, a, to the carburetor, um, which will run my generator like normal. This other valve right here is a shut off that shuts the fuel off going to the vaporizer system. So that I can use either the vapor system or my generator, run my generator like normal. Now this fuel box is equipped with a float valve. Just a manual float valve. Fuel will pass through it. Um, when the valve, when, when the fuel level goes down in the container, the valve will, will drop down, which opens up a little valve inside of it. Um, and then the fuel, the, uh, the, the fuel will enter the container and fill up and as it fills up that float ball will rise up and close that valve off. This right here is the fuel outlet for this container and this fuel outlet goes into the vaporizer container and fills this with fuel. I have this container separate from the vaporizer chamber so that I can test different fuel levels in this vapor chamber, um, the vaporizer. So if I wanted the level to be right here, I would have it sitting on the ground. If I wanted the fuel level inside of the chamber to be up higher, all I would do is pick this container up higher to whatever level I wanted it to be at um, so that I can test different amounts of fuel in the vaporizer to see where the best um, what the best amount of fuel is for the operation of the vaporizer. Because the more fuel that you add in, the more vapor it's going to produce. The less fuel, the less vapor it'll produce. Just because the uh, agitation of the fuel as the hot air bubbles through it, uh, if there's more gas, then it'll pick up more vapors. So, that's how that works. Now how this whole system is set up right here. These two valves right here are my air intake control valves. These let air into the vaporizer. 
They are gate valves so that I have fine tuning control over the air that's coming into the vaporizer chamber. This right here, this particular piece, is the exhaust inlet to the vaporizer. And how it works is exhaust comes out of the generator right here, flows through this pipe, and goes down into my vaporizer. This pipe right here is inside of the air inlet pipe. So the air inlet pipe is a, um, I believe it is a one inch pipe. Yeah, it's a one inch pipe. Um, so the air inlet pipe is a one inch pipe. Then the exhaust pipe that is inside of that air inlet pipe is a three quarter inch pipe and it's a piece of copper tubing. Um, and that copper tubing goes from right here and it runs down in a U shape. It runs down here, comes along the bottom of the container inside, and then it comes back up here and exhaust exits right here. And I will be putting a muffler system on this at, at this point right here. So the reason I did it like that is so that I can preheat the air going into the vaporizer. Now how the preheating is going to work is because the air coming in through these valves passes in between the exhaust pipe and the air inlet pipe, it passes through a really, really thin passageway which allows, which makes the air, forces the air to run along that exhaust pipe that is between, um, that is inside of the air inlet pipe. And the air runs down here till it almost reaches the bottom, uh, and then it cuts off. The, the pipe is cut off right there and just open, and the exhaust pipe continues on around. Um, so the pipe is down here really low to the contain, the bottom, almost to touching the bottom of the container, the air inlet pipe. Um, and that allows the air to bubble up through the fuel that's in there, whatever the fuel is. And then once the air bubbles up through the fuel, it passes through a large area of stainless steel wool that I have packed in there so that any splashing that occurs from the air bubbling through the fuel, there's no liquid that is able to pass through that stainless steel wool layer and come through the outlet, the vapor air outlet right here. So you have the air that comes in through here. It's superheated as it passes between the two, the, the exhaust pipe and the air in the pipe, and it bubbles down through the gas. The heat alone creates fuel vapors um, from the air that's heated up and the bubbling of the air through the gasoline also creates vapors. And that is sucked up um, and then comes out this air vapor tube and it goes and it connects right into my carburetor. That's my carburetor. I left my carburetor on so I control the, can control the air mixture right here. Um, that way when I'm starting this generator when it's cold or running it on normal fuel it'll start up right away and I can adjust that. Um, this right here is my secondary air inlet valve and what that does is it lets ambient air into the mixture, the, the air fuel mixture coming through here because this can be too rich at times and I need more air coming in through right here that will dilute that mixture to give it the proper air to fuel ratio so that the generator will run off of the vapor system properly. And that's what that is for and I will go into more detail as I am showing the videos of this and showing it in action when it's running. Um, one more little detail that I wanted to, to, to tell you is remember this exhaust pipe right here. It's three quarter inch. The air inlet is a one inch. Um, it's all tied together as one piece in the U shape. Um, and it runs along the bottom of the container so that the exhaust pipe heats up the fuel that's in my container. 
So that fuel reaches more than boiling temperature and it actually boils the gasoline or whatever fuel is in there. Um, that creates vapor that way and helps with the uh, vaporization of the fuel and it helps vaporize all those nasty additives that are in the fuel so that I don't have any sludge at the bottom of the container. Um, a sludge can be like a thick, I guess, um, almost like syrup is kind of what it is. It can be nasty stuff and hard to, to, to get out and get off when that occurs. Um, and that prevents that because it, it heats it up to the point that it will vaporize all of the additives in the, in the gasoline. Uh, but that's a little rundown of the system and how it works. If you guys have any questions on it, please let me know. Um, feel free to ask and I will do the best that I can to answer it um, or answer them. And I will be producing videos of this running. I will do some detailed videos. Some of them are going to be pretty dang long um, so that you can see live time action of this. So if I run it for two hours, I will record it running the whole two hours um, and put videos up of it running so that you can see this in action running on the vaporizer, running on the off the vaporizer versus running normally. I use this gen, this generator right here uh, and I am going to this for the time being instead of in my car so that I can know more of what's going on. I'm going to be putting thermostats and temperature regulators and all that on this and I'm going to automate it somewhat like I have in my car. Um, and I have it on here so that I know exactly what's going on so that I can plug in specific loads to this generator say like it were a thousand watts plugged into this generator I can have that thousand watts plugged in there running uh, um, the gener running off the generator and I can test to see how long it will run with that load with regular gasoline, my, with my generator running like normal, and then with my vaporizer system on there. And I'll uh, be able to, to get more um, legitimate data that will show the runtime differences of a vapor versus a regular fuel um, going into this system, the generator. So um, that's pretty much it for now, guys. I look forward to sharing the, the results with you, sharing the testing with you. If you want me to, to test any specific fuel, um, let me know. I'm going to be trying a few different things in here that I've already tried in the past, but this is a different setup, so I want to try it on here. I mean, I'm set up a little bit better so that I can try different types of fuels. Um, what I have to do with some fuels, like motor oil, is I have to get the the whole vapor system up to its uh, um, its highest temperature and then let that particular fuel like motor oil into the system so that it's at um, a temperature which will allow for it to vaporize. Or you can mix some gasoline into the, the motor oil and it will vaporize the gasoline then as it reaches temperature the motor oil will begin to vaporize or whatever fuel you're using. So. It's about it for now. For those of you that are doing stuff to me, I have my good guard dog here. He's a really good dog. And uh, peace. Peace out, guys. More videos coming in the future. Stay tuned. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and all that kind of jazz. Take care.